We are now in the final room of the exhibition, and this is where we will finish the story of Moshe Vorobejcik, aka Moy Ver, aka Moshe Raviv. This is the room where we can see a very important part of his life, namely the entire period he spent in Palestine and then Israel. I said that in 1934 he emigrated to Palestine, but he arrived in Palestine for the first time in 1932. You can see the photographs he took at the time for the Photo Globe Agency to the right of the entrance. These were quite traditional photos, or at least they showed Palestine in a traditional way, as the Holy Land, as a place of prayer. The remaining photos that we can see here were made from 1934 onward, when Vorobejcik, a new resident of Palestine under the British mandate, started his intense work for Histadrut. Histadrut was formerly a trade union of Jewish workers but at the same time an organization responsible for a lot in the everyday lives of Palestinian Jews. It was involved in kibbutzim, schools, health insurance, construction, everything. A powerful organization of which Moshe Vorobejcik was a member and for which he worked as a photographer and graphic designer. He traveled to many places to photograph the results of the incredibly effective activities of Histadrut. So he visited numerous kibbutzim, numerous farms and construction sites, and then he made those photographs either into posters, we can see only four of them here but there were over 200 in total, or into illustrations for numerous books he designed. The organization wanted to spread awareness of their activities and convince European Jewish youth to fulfill Zionist ideas in this way, through working the land and physical work in general. Publications that we see here, unfortunately only closed, are extensively illustrated by Vorobejcik who, using his photos, made photo montages to illustrate these books. These photos can be divided into several groups. The first one involves the entire area related to farming, which was the absolute foundation of building the new, self-reliant state according to the Zionist ideology. Farming was truly a national issue. This is why in this photo we have a farmer with a huge hoe. He practically symbolizes a national hero. The hoe was an important symbol of that time and of laying the foundations for the future state of Israel. The second group comprises photos that show us the life of builders and again, building and construction as a social duty, the national task. They show healthy young men building a wall or a building, but it is rather a metaphor for the construction of the Jewish state or the national home, as it was then called, which became the state of Israel. Histadrut was a socialist organization, so equal rights, social engagement and certain social justice were essential to them. This is why we see here a lot of posters and brochure designs concerning the union movement. An interesting example is the poster that encourages women to vote so that they are represented in union authorities. Leftist Zionists, Moshe Vorobejcik among them, had a very clear concept of the Jewish woman's role in society. She should be a working, modern, socially engaged, aware and educated woman. Children too, of course, but they were to be raised by suitable personnel in kibbutz, precisely so that women could work as well. We can see a small selection from a gigantic body of work he did for Histadrut, and his work is a very important part of the creation of the State of Israel. This was an extraordinary moment when lots of young European Jews were involved in that history. Unfortunately, it was also the moment when, in the late 1930s, the British gradually limited the possibilities for European Jews to immigrate. Meanwhile, European Jews were increasingly forced to flee from Europe due to growing anti-Semitism. This, in turn, caused tensions with the local Arab community. Insurrections and armed scuffles began. Jews armed themselves, Arabs armed themselves, and armed conflicts erupted. So, if you look at the group of photographs that we can see on one of the walls, you can see the builders of a kibbutz and a beautiful photo montage of a young pioneer with a rifle on his back. We see him through palm tree leaves. He had the rifle because at the time, people who lived in a kibbutz had to know how to defend themselves against Arab attacks and when the foundation for a kibbutz had to be prepared in a dozen or so hours, the work was done with armed security, and this, too, we can see in Vorobejcik's photos. The last group of photographs in this room consists of some of the last photos that Vorobejcik made in the mid-40s. 
This is a series that shows a trip or a kind of pilgrimage to the Masada fortress. Masada is an important site for Jews. The fortress defended itself from the Romans for a very long time. Eventually, its defenders committed mass suicide, but they fought to the last drop of blood, and the site itself was used to create a sense of national identity, of a proud, valiant nation ready to sacrifice for the country. And that was very much needed at the time. Let us remember that this was right after the Second World War ended, so right after everyone started to realize that the Holocaust happened. These young people needed to be offered some other perspective, a heroic perspective. Vorobeychik took part in that. He took photos and turned them into lithographs, which he published in a small book. And almost right after that, he stopped doing photography because soon after, the War of Israeli Independence broke out, the War of 1948. He was drafted to the information service and he took photos, probably not on the front line, and then never came back to active photography. He worked mainly as a graphic designer, designing books and book covers, as a photo editor and illustrator for major Israeli newspapers, and he returned to painting. What I did not tell you is that Moises Vorobeychik's original dream was to become a painter. This is why he studied drawing in gymnasium and then studied painting for three years in the fine arts department of the Stefan Batory University. He has never fulfilled that dream. Meanwhile, the possibility presented itself after the independence war in the early 50s, when the city of Safed gave former Arab houses to artists. Houses that belonged to the Arabs chased away as a result of this war. The city gave the artists houses for studios and open galleries. Vorobeychik threw himself into work by the easel and created numerous paintings, a lot of watercolors. Some of them were inspired by Jewish folklore, and some, like the work we can see on the blue wall, were abstract pieces inspired by or captioned with quotes from the Zohar, a great Jewish Kabbalistic book. We can also note very late reminiscences of his Bauhaus days. He even called some of those tiny paintings in a very straightforward manner a tribute to Paul Klee his former teacher, or a tribute to Bauhaus. He died as a painter and today, in this exhibition, we can discover him for the first time as a complex, multifaceted figure, active in multiple and varied media.